Hey there, is it just me or has anybody else ever overspent their homeschooling budget? Surely it's not just me, right? Hi everyone, I'm Pam Barnhill and I have helped thousands of homeschoolers create doable systems, beat burnout, and bring more joy to their homeschool day. And welcome to the third video in our series about the different types of homeschool moms. And this week we're going to be talking about Best Intention Becky. Now, if you haven't been following the series and if you haven't watched video one, I'm gonna link it for you up there because in video one, I go through all of the different people in the the because in video one i go through all the different kinds of homeschool moms and i give you the chance to kind of see all of them as an overview so you can pick out which one or more than one because a lot of us fall into more than one category that you most identify with so you can go back there and get like all the details about best intention becky but today for just a little reminder Becky loves creative planning. Becky is one of the people who absolutely loves to plan her homeschool year, and she just loves the thrill of finding a new resource. Now, Best Intention Becky also wants to do all the things with her kids. It's so hard for her to narrow down which things that she wants to do. So she sometimes has a tendency to over plan and then feel like a failure when she can't actually get all the things done. And so we really want to help Becky with some of those feelings of failure, some of that over planning, and also some of that overspending that comes along with wanting to do all the things. Like it's hard to say no to all of the fabulous resources out there. So what happens when you say yes to all the things and you get all the stuff in your house and you start trying to plan them out is you typically end up scheduling too many things for you and your kids to do. And so you're trying to juggle all of these different resources and that actually creates a lot of stress for you and your kids. And so by narrowing down the good things to just the best things, then you're able to have a more consistent and enjoyable learning experience for your kids and for yourself. And then there's also some peace of mind and that comes from this financial control and kind of adhering to the plan that you've made or the budget. Because let's face it, especially these days, you know, not being able to stick to a budget and all of that financial stress is really, really weighing heavy on a lot of us. And then you have the idea of, well, I bought all of these things and I'm not able to do all of them now. And so there's the stress of not doing all the planned activities. And so it just kind of joins together and it creates this one big ball of stress. So what can a best intention Becky do to eliminate some of these problems? And it's something that I think every homeschool mom should do, no matter what your homeschool mom archetype, and that is you need to write your vision statement. The planning process always starts with sitting down and thinking about what things are the most important to me. What things are the most important to my family as we go on this homeschool journey. And it's when you really get clear and you get defined on what those things are, then I like to call it the wall for your homeschool spaghetti. Because then you could say, do I wanna do this thing? Let me check it against my vision statement. Does it fit within my vision? Yes, we're putting it on the plan. No, nope. We're throwing that one out and that one is going away. And so once I started doing this, it really got super easy for me to ignore a lot of the bright and shiny things that were out there because even though they were bright and shiny, even though they looked like a lot of fun, they really weren't lining up with my vision of homeschooling. They weren't lining up with the things that were important to us and they weren't lining up with the things that I knew my kids and I liked to do. So writing that vision statement is the very first most important step, especially for a best intention Becky. Now, the next thing that I want to address is this idea that Becky often has, which is, oh, if I create a plan for my homeschool year, does this mean that I can't change my mind later? Because 
Becky gets really afraid about not being able to choose another resource or add something new to the plan or change her mind. She's not as spontaneous as Carefree Kathy, but she likes to leave her options open. And what is beautiful about following a planning process like our autopilot homeschool planning process is you can create that plan, but we have these periodic review times built into your homeschool year. And this is the time where you step back, you take a deep breath you ask yourself what is working and what is not working and is there something I want to change and because we also teach you a number of different flexible schedules you can actually use a combination of things like loop scheduling and block scheduling to fit more things into your homeschool year and use more of the resources you love but in a way that doesn't overwhelm you and doesn't overwhelm your kids. So one of the homeschool moms in our autopilot planning program, her name is Lauren, and she said that autopilot helped her because she created a vision for her homeschool, and then she created goals for each of her kids. And by referring back to the vision before purchasing anything, that helped her not to buy the things that didn't match the vision or wouldn't serve a purpose in helping her kids meet their goals for the year. It helps her keep on track and moving forward with the plan and the curriculum since she was more focused and more purposeful with her purchases after creating the course. And this is just so important. It's such an important step to keep you from feeling overwhelmed and keep you from feeling strained while giving you some different ways to do some flexible scheduling and fit in a lot of the fun things that you do want to do that do fit in your vision and also giving you those periodic review points where you can change things if you need it. So autopilot and the planning process we teach really is the best of all these worlds. We're going to show you how to do all of those different things. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below. If you have struggled as a best intention, Becky, so many times uh, members tell me that autopilot is pays for itself because by getting clear on their vision, they save so much money not buying things that don't fit with their homeschool. And we love that because you buy autopilot once, You use it forever and ever, and every single year, it can help stop you from making those purchases that you don't need to make. And hey, that's what we're all about, is helping you. So check out the link down below, and next week, I will be back to talk about Strategic Susan and some of her struggles and how we can help her as well.